Hey guys, Cockerpunk here again, unfortunately. Oh, I do. Okay. Everybody says I have to hold a gun during one of my videos, so I'll hold this guy. It's my RT. Uh, I just took the sight rail off. Anyway, unfortunately though, for you paintball players out there, this isn't going to be a paintball related video. Um, I'm responding to my own video, actually, about the proof of God, because um, that seemed to have uh, a lot of people confused. <clears throat> so I'm going to clear it up. Um, the proof of God, uh, uh, philosophically, that uh, Venom Fang X is using, and that pretty much everybody has always used, is, um, it's an old one. Really old. Um, it's a, uh, it was, uh, originally contrived or, uh, thought of by, um, by an interesting fellow. He was a botanist by trade. Um, he studied nature, actually a rationalist as well, um, which is interesting. Um, a rationalist simply believes that human reason um, is the uh, paramount to understanding the universe. Um, so he's a, he's a rationalist, he's a botanist, he's a scientist, but, but this is before science was invented. Um, and what he uh, found out, uh, you, you guys might have heard of him, his name's Aristotle actually. Um, He's also a pagan, which is interesting. Um, you might even call him a druid, um, because what he did was uh, he uh, he looked at you know plants and animals, and and he saw that every everything that happens um, there's a reason that it happens, and and there's there's everything moves something else is what he said. So he had movers uh, was his understanding of the universe. So, something moves something, which moves something, which moves something, which moves something, right? So, he has all these movers. Well, what he did is he went backwards and he said, well, something had to move this, something had to move this, something had to move this, and eventually he gets back to, well, we exist, therefore, something had to move us into existence. And so, he calls God the first mover. So I, I kind of call the proof, the, the first mover proof of God. Um, and I boil it down to basically cause and effect rather than mover. Uh, that might be, you know, he was Greek or whatever, so uh, mover might not be the exact word he used. I don't know Greek, so I don't know what he said in particular, but I call it cause and effect. Um, something caused something. There's always a cause, right? So we can trace this back, theoretically, we can trace this all the way back knowing that the universe is finite, you know, science has proven that, that the universe is a finite um, entity, um, and we can of course go back really, really far back, you know, uh, something caused me to be born, uh, something caused my parents to be born, something caused my parents to come into existence, something caused the world to come into existence, something, you know, eventually that you can trace back enough causes whether you believe in science or not, you can, you can trace back enough causes to say, well, something had to cause the universe. Um, here's my trouble with that. And here's why, from, you know, 1280 BC or whatever, when Aristotle was working on this proof of God, to now, you know, almost 4,000 years later, probably, uh, this proof of God has been in existence, and uh, it's been used to prove all sorts of gods, which is an interesting note, too. <laughs> it's by no means a Christian. Um, proof of God. Uh, Christians just happen to be the only people right now in business trying to prove their God, which, as I pointed out in the last video, is kind of laughable. Um, anyway, the trouble with this is, is that the movers, the cause, is always something that's within our universe. You know, I, I dropped a back block. Here I have a dime. Um, you know, what causes that to fall is gravity, right? Which gravity is part of our universe. Now, what is what is gravity? Well, gravity has a cause. It's the mass in the universe being attracted to itself. But what's the cause of that? Well, mass is the cause of that. Mass is the universe. So you can trace everything back in that example to mass, um, which is part of the universe. Well, now you could you could feasibly say, well, doesn't mass need a cause? But that 
doesn't really make sense because what you're doing is you know mass mass space and time are the three components to the universe we can measure mass with space and time and we need mass to have space or time so uh, those three are fundamentally the components of the universe but if we look at what would cause matter what would cause mass to exist uh, it has to be something outside the universe because time definitely doesn't uh, create mass energy well postulated to create mass then you become well what would what what creates energy well mass well what creates mass energy so you get in this circle uh, that that's what that goes into like the large hedron collider and the idea that mass and energy are actually the same thing but say that's true something had to cause that right well again we're making this assumption that somehow the laws of cause and effect the mover laws which all previously were things within our universe exists in a place and time where there is no place or time before the universe uh, you know the universe is this entity how can we assume that the laws of this entity work out here is basically what this proof boils down to and why any sort of first mover cause and effect any sort of one of those proofs of God doesn't work because it's making that key assumption and that's an assumption that is faith so uh, um, that's just what it is uh, by its nature it, it we can't prove that assumption because we can never leave our universe all the technology, all the science, and anything we can possibly do inside this universe can't be applied outside of this universe, no matter how advanced it is. Um, so by our very nature, we can never leave the universe as we know it. So we can never know if there's a God, if there's a cause for the universe. Um, we can never know. So, um... I mean, that's what it really boils down to. Anybody who tries to use a first cause uh, argument, a cause and effect, a movers kind of thing to prove God, it just doesn't work because it breaks down at the universe level uh, where you can't prove that time exists. So anyway, an another guy here just said something uh, in here about um, uh, eternal, right? Eternal defined as outside of space and time. But are you seeing that issue right there? Outside of space and time. That's over here. We can't prove anything over here. So how can we base a proof on something that we can't know? It doesn't make sense. It, it can't be proven. Um, so I, I guess I don't really know any other way to put this beyond what I'm, what I'm saying here is that it just doesn't work. The, the cause and effect, the first mover, I mean, frankly, Aristotle was wrong. Um, there's just no way around that. Uh, you can't bring in new evidence to change that fact. You just can't. Um, so, I hope you guys get it this time. Um, I'll just make this as a re reply to my Proof of God is Real video. And uh, you paintball players, it's okay. I got my gun. It's right here. And um, and we got a really kick-ass barrel test coming up and all sorts of exciting stuff. But uh, I just wanted to make a response video here because it is getting annoying in there. Having to reiterate the exact same point over and over again. So, you guys have a good one. Catch you later. See ya.